Now, to me, the real challenge of, of coloring is that you want it to add visual engagement and interest to your work. And you've spent a long time getting nice, clean line art. And so you don't want your colors to distract from it or to, to limit its potential, right? And I think that's why a lot of digital colorists really like limited color because it really showcases the drawing. The more kind of primary and saturated colors you use, the harder it is to see the drawing underneath and the lines underneath. That's why so many chromatic grays are used. But whatever palette, it can always be adjusted later. Right now, we just have to plop things in. So instead of finding a lot of new colors, I think I've got quite a few here that I can still use. So I'm just going to use them in new places. So I'm going to take that blue, and I'm going to use it here and here, and maybe on this lip here. Is there anywhere else I want to use the blue? No, I don't think so. It's nice as your, um, your options for coloring, you know, you don't need to fill quite so much. Eventually, you will complete it all. All right, then I think I can use this golden hilt color that was taken from my tattoo reference. They have a, a bloody knife. That might be a fun thing to do. Um, I can use that in different places for sure, especially if I want to color it like a playing card. Definitely on the epaulette. Definitely as a rim for the sleeve. Definitely, I think, on this handkerchief. Reminds me of the Boy Scouts. Possibly inside these diamonds. And for the little frill here, here which makes it feel a little bit Elizabethan. And then maybe for the gold of the eyepiece. And maybe even, because it's better to have something in, for all these little grommets of the mask. The computer seems to be slowing a bit. Probably going to be important to save soon. And then I think also behind my little flower. Okay. So I go to flat color. Remember, this is a different layer than my line art, and I drop it in. Whoops. And I didn't select the right color. So let me select it. I'm just going to steal it from myself. Or I can steal it, you know, from the tattoo using the, the eyedropper tool. It's a little dark. You can also customize it. Be like that. Drop that in. And then the ones like the diamonds that were contained and protected, I have to drop those in individually. And maybe I want to, you know, replace the color of something with it. A little yellow might be nice up there. And more and more of your image will be, sh you know, start to make sense. 
you can see that that, that off-white for the teeth makes a difference. I'm just switching colors around a little bit. Stealing colors from myself. Trying them in different places. Okay. Now for this part of the sash, and for this part of the collar, and for this part of the epaulette, I think I want something kind of silvery, and probably this part of the plague doctor's robe. Come on, select it. There we go. I want something kind of silvery. Instead of picking a brand new color, which I could do, I could try just using what I've used for the knife. Because as long as you fill something in, as long as you flat it with something, it can be replaced. Hope I missed selecting this area. And then maybe that kind of deadens it a little bit. So maybe I use the lighter version of the knife color. So I'm not trying to overdo the color here for some of these. Good thing I have that layer locked so I don't make that mistake. One of the hardest things I find to color are things that are meant to be really dark, right? Like a plague mask is, is black usually. So what do I use? Well, I want a, a color that communicates darkness, but isn't black. So I'm gonna try this tone that I've used for like the handle of the knife. But that is indeed very dark. And so that's where duotone coloring might help. And I could try, you know, lessening that. But it kind of needs to be fairly dark in places to have impact. And that's tough with the dark cowl as well. But that gray color, I think I can also use in the little details. Almost done filling it all up with flat color. Whether they're the best flat colors, I don't know yet. I don't think so. But once I've got them all filled in, then they're a lot easier to work with. For some reason, that one little grommet didn't select. And I saw that at the time, I didn't know why. Anywhere else I want that's, that's silver. Nope, that will do it. So as you get to more detailed areas, you have to kind of zoom in to drop them in. And as they become more and more contained, you have to hit each spot individually. 
Come on. It's getting there slowly, slowly. Oh yeah, that's right. And the little smile. Okay, the nice thing about things being fully contained is that you don't always have to go back to your black line art layer if it's fully contained. So I can just fill this in completely with the color. Fill all of these in completely because they're contained now. But then they fill a little uh, rainbow or a little ridge, a little halo on the other side. So it's all just selecting your pixels. So everything has slight difficulties. So it's it's best to like kind of work those steps. Select what you want from one layer and then drop it in on the flat color layer. And when you see that things are missing for one reason or another, you can always use your paintbrush and just select the color and just paint over it. So for the strap of the mask, I think I want the kind of brown of the beard. And this way I can limit the kind of new colors I need to select. And then we get to something that happens if you have uncontained shapes. So I've been waiting to be able to show that to you. So behind the skull here, I don't have a line that shows the back of the jaw. And it doesn't really make sense to have that all be empty. It feels like it should be in shadow. So what do I do? Well, I, I'm on my flat color layer, right? It's the only layer I'm allowed to, to paint on. Everything else is locked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a color and I'm going to paint just like I was digitally inking a new outline. Okay. Now I'm going to lasso. This is why contained shapes are so much easier. Underneath the black lines, I don't need to get the shape perfect. I just need them to fall underneath the black lines. And then I can use my paint bucket to drop it in. And then clean the seam. And so that is a color without an edge, you know, an uncontained color. And then sometimes you'll find that your magic wand wasn't able to select certain areas. So you have to go in with your brush, just like with digital inking, but this time on your color layer with color and fill them in. Now these little halos that happen, just because our painted line art is rasterized, These little halos we can address in a variety of ways. One way to address them is just to paint them out. So you select the color and then you just paint the edge cleanly. But that takes a lot of time. And so there are some shortcuts that I use depending